Hey guys, uh, Vin from NV Auto here. Uh, welcome to another video. Uh, today I wanted to show you guys uh, some tips and tricks of how to weld some flanges for your exhaust system. So when it comes to making exhaust systems or anything to do with uh, flanges, obviously you're gonna need your flanges and you're gonna need your pipe. Uh, here I got a vibrant 2.25, two and a quarter inch flange here. And I have this pipe, which should be able to slide just right on top of it. Something that you wanna make sure of when you're building an exhaust is you kinda wanna do, depending on the flow and the direction that you're doing it, you want to have your flanges kind of the last weld or the first, depending on where you're going. What I mean by that is, um, for example, if you had your pipe coming to this way and then you have to meet it to this spot, having the flange be the last thing to weld as opposed to finishing this flange here and then finishing that flange here, you're actually able to figure it out and cheat whatever it be half a degree, it could be an eighth of an inch out this way and a sixteenth of an inch in this way. But having this as a last place to tack on and then to weld will give yourself the best fitment uh, where you're not gonna be banging your exhaust onto the car or anything like that. So once you finally have your pieces fitted, one of the most important things when welding a flange is you want a heat sink. So with this giant chunk of aluminum, uh, I have these holes in it for various different flanges that I usually work with. The idea behind this is when, if you were just to weld this kind of on anything and um, welding this around without a heat sink, this flange will warp a lot. The, depending on how thick the flange is, uh, this is a, I believe a 3 8 thickness, is that right? I can take a measurement, no half, sorry, this is a half inch flange. Uh, actually, no, 3 8 flange. I need a measuring tape. But the thicker the flange, the less it will warp. But regardless, basically with anything you weld, they will warp. So having this set up here uh, eliminates a lot of it. You still will get some warpage, but sometimes it, it should be good enough where you don't need to machine it. Most of the time, if you don't have this, you're gonna need to machine it for sure, no matter what, and it won't be flat. So basically, yeah, let's get started. What I'm gonna do is gonna, I'm gonna bolt this flange on, and then we're gonna get started to welding this together. So now that we have our flange bolted onto our um, heat sink here, I have this hole here I use to purge uh, from the tank. Uh, the reason why you're gonna wanna purge it is anytime you're welding stainless steel, uh, stainless steel welds, tend to oxidize, and so by purging the inside of where you're welding, you're able to have nice and clean welds. I'll show you some examples of uh, what happens when you don't purge it. So what I'm gonna do is uh, grab my purge hose here. Set up this way. Now that's ready to go, it's purged. The thing that you wanna do when you're purging is you have to give the gas place to escape from. You don't wanna cap it and just leave the argon inside. You're gonna need fresh argon going through to push out the oxygen. Uh, I like to use aluminum foil, because again, it's really easy to work with. Rips easily, takes shape easily. Basically, just cover it like that. And um, poke some holes through it. That's probably enough. And before welding anything, you always want to make sure that you clean up your metal. Uh, I've already cleaned it up. I use kind of one of these flap discs, um, sanding disc to clean up. Uh, makes things very easy. Again, if you're welding this onto an exhaust system, you could already have this tacked on using a MIG or a TIG. Depending on what you have there, it's a little bit easier. So if you're doing it on the car, you know, you tack it in place and then you could bring uh, your pipe down here. Uh, once it's tacked on, then you could start welding it on the bench here with your heat sink. Uh, so basically, we're gonna turn on the gas, fill this up, and tack it in place. So now that this is starting to purge, getting ready to tack it. Again, if you tack it without purging it, uh, when you need fitment, it's not a huge deal. You just don't wanna get too much heat penetrated through. 
Uh, this purging just kind of keeps it a little bit safer from any oxidization on the inside. But basically what I'm going to do is uh, tack it into the place where it's going to be. I like to tack it uh, if you're using a two bolt flange uh, just inside of the two bolts here. Uh, what that allows is when you're welding you could finish here and then move on around this way as opposed to if you weld in between these bolts do tend to get in the way of the torch. The other thing to take account of is this being a thicker flange than your pipe, you want to be able to focus your heat onto the flange more than onto the pipe. Uh, the typical rule of thumb is one, thou, um, one amp per thou of the thickness you're using. Uh, but again, when it comes to having two different types of thicknesses, uh, your experience and kind of where you're going to start off with, you know, is up to you. I like to start uh, by starting kind of high. Uh, so right now I'm going to be welding this at 100 amps for the tack and then I'll slowly dial it down to see what the puddle looks like. So now that we have this tacked on, uh, obviously the next thing to do is simply weld it. But I wanted to show you guys uh, some of the different things and different techniques and uh, when you do certain things or when you don't do certain things and what happens. Uh, first, I'd like to mention, right now I'm using this uh, FUPA 12 cup with a 316 seriated tungsten. Uh, currently using 309 316 filler rod um, usually what you would do is use the same size filler rod of the, t of the pipe, but again, since we're doing a fillet weld here, I want some more filler rod. I'll show you guys the difference of how they look using either um, the thin stuff compared to this stuff here. And um, yeah, so right now uh, when you do purge, you kind of want it around 5 uh, CFM or anything below that, just enough to when you hear um, it going through, you know, it's being purged. Uh, with this cup here, with the 12, I'm currently running at 25 CFM. Um, more gas coverage, the cleaner your look, the welds will be. So yeah, first uh, I'll do the first weld at, let's try 120 amps, see how it turns out. Um, and then we'll see and go on from there. So we got our uh, argon purging through this. Um, welding at 125 amps. Uh, using 316 uh, filler rod of ER309 and uh, yeah let's see how this goes all right so next we're gonna try welding the same uh, filler rod uh, but we're going to do that 100 amps this time. So you can see the difference between these welds, uh, not a whole lot actually. Uh, this one here uh, at 120 amps, this one here being at 100 amps. I had my foot down uh, fully the whole entire time. Uh, the difference is um, because I'm welding on this side at 100 amps, I actually needed to wait a little bit longer between each dip and between moving on to the next spot. Um, so I would say that welding it at 120 amps was actually a little bit easier because I was able to have a good rhythm dip and move and dip and move without needing to wait for each um, puddle to be uh, deep enough into this. Um, so 
Again, it comes down to preference, um, especially if you're learning. I uh, suggest you go on the lower side of the amperage and move a little bit slower so you have a consistent bead each time. If you could look super closely though, you'll see that uh, these beads are a little bit wider and spaced out than these ones a little bit closer. Again, due to the fact that I needed to wait uh, to move on to the next spot. But it's up to you to practice and get the familiar with um, welding and knowing when it's good time to move on to the next dip. Um, so next we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna use um, 1 16th um, filler rod this time and we'll see uh, kind of what happens when that happens. If you take a look between these two, the again, each of the dip are a lot closer uh, compared to this one. And then you'll see too that they're a little bit shorter. Obviously with a thinner filler rod, it's not gonna be as tall. Typically for welding something like this, I would suggest using the 3 16th, but for you, if, you, if that's all you have, uh, that's totally fine. Again, not the end of the world because uh, they still penetrate and then you still have a good solid weld. Uh, next I want to show what happens when you don't have any purge uh, behind and we'll see um, what it looks like on the inside. So 120 amps, uh, 316 filler rod, uh, again ER309, um, but this time with no back purge. So an interesting thing that happens when you actually don't back purge, uh, the puddle gets a little bit um, unpredictable. Uh, for some reason, when it's not being cooled on the backside, uh, the puddle does tend to do weird things. Although this one uh, wasn't that bad, but again, once you get under the helmet and you kind of see what happens. But just taking a look on the inside here, and I'll pull this off the flange and you can kind of see what happens. And just to see the difference between having a heat sink here, um, if you could feel it, obviously you can't because you're on the other side of a computer screen. Um, this aluminum is pretty hot, but um, I literally just finished welding this and I could touch this flange uh, with my hands. It's still pretty warm, but uh, the aluminum heat sink is doing its job. So if I didn't have this, again, uh, the flange will warp a lot. Uh, what you could do afterwards is you could just put this on a belt sander or something like that and uh, make sure that it's flat. So looking between the difference of having um, back purge and not having back purge, you see here there's been oxidization um, where there wasn't purge and then you see full solid welds on this side. What happens is if you don't have back purge and you have this oxidization, uh, you are prone to crack here. Typically speaking, this is an incomplete weld and if it were to crack at this weld, it would crack at this section because there was no back purge. So this is why you want to have back purge. Uh, and again, the other reason why you want this heat sink is, as you can see, we are fairly flat, not 100%, but there's this little, tiny little bit of rock here, which we could obviously finish up by putting on the belt sander or just uh, slightly grinding it down. But even with this giant piece of heat sink, this flange still warps ever so slightly. So you can only imagine what would happen if you didn't have a heat sink on it. Um, it'll save yourself a lot of headache by having a heat sink and doing a lot less work finishing your machine service after so you don't have any exhaust leaks when you're all done. But uh, basically um, that's how to weld a flange. If you really want to weld um, this lip here, you totally can, but be advised you for sure need to machine it afterwards because once you weld this face here without um, any heat sink, this flange will warp. Yeah, uh, that's all it takes to weld a flange. Pretty simple. Again, um, you know, have fun with it. Try different techniques, try different amperages, try different speeds, try different filler rods, 
and then uh, typically you should be able to find something that you like and you feel more comfortable with with your technique and your style and hopefully uh, your welds could be uh, super nice. So uh, thanks for watching again and uh, I'll see you guys next time.